Love working on cars and trucks? Then it's time for you to shift into gear at JTEC, an automotive, diesel, and truck driving school that you have to check out at JTEC.org. At JTEC, we prepare you to go to work. You'll receive hands-on training in our diagnostic and repair labs using modern equipment that offers you real-world experiences to get your career engine revving. Let's go. Call 904-483-9460 or go to JTEC.org. JTEC, driving futures forward. Good morning, my name is Mark Hope from Jones Technical Institute. This morning we will be conducting a Class A in-vehicle or in-cab inspection. The first thing with the in-cab inspection, you always want to do your safety equipment first. Uh, the first two things out here are my fire extinguisher in triangles. Uh, normally sometimes your fire extinguisher is located inside your door. In this particular setup, our fire extinguisher and triangles are located in our, in our baggage compartment. Some trucks have a key, which will take, obviously, uh, a key to open it up. In this particular truck, we have a release handle for our baggage compartment. Okay, inside my baggage compartment, I have three reflective DOT triangles. You always want to make sure you have three of them. Uh, with everything, it's properly mounted and secured. They're not cracked, bent, broken. All nuts and bolts are present and tight. Here you have your fire extinguisher. It's ABC rated for your vehicle. It's in the green, it's fully charged, and my safety pin is intact. It is also properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, broken, and all nuts and bolts are present and tight. At this time, I'm going to demonstrate a proper three-point entry into my vehicle. This is used to prevent falls or slips. So, a three-point entry is either two feet, one hand, two hands, or, or one foot. Two hands, one foot, two hands, one foot, two hands, one foot. To continue on our uh, in-cab inspection with safety equipment, you want to make sure, you want to look in your overhead compartment and make sure that you have one spare fuse for every fuse that's in your fuse box. At this point, you want to check your seat belt. You have three mounts. You have a top mount, a bottom mount, and a side mount. They're all three properly mounted and secured, not cracked, not bent, not broken, all nuts and bolts are present and tight. You want to make sure that your seat belt latches, unlatches properly, and then latch it back up. You also want to pull on your seat belt. You want to make sure it's not cut, not torn, not frayed, and not twisted. At this time, we're going to talk about our mirrors. I have two uh, door mirrors. One on this side, one on the passenger side. Also I have two fender mirrors, one on my side and one on my passenger side. You wanna make sure that your mirrors are properly mounted and secured, not cracked, not bent, not broken. All nuts and bolts are present and tight. They're not chipped and there's no illegal stickers. The, mo the most important key point to the, your mirrors are they're properly aligned to you to prevent any blind spots. Now we're going to talk about our windshield. Our windshield is properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked. It's not broken. There's no chips. There's no illegal stickers. And there's no obstruction of view. Then we're going to talk about our wipers and our, wipe, our wiper blades. They're both properly mounted and secured. Not cracked, not bent, not broken. Your blades. They're made out of rubber. There's no abrasions, bruises, cuts. They're not dry rotted and they're flush up against the windshield. At this time we're going to do a vehicle safe start. You want to clutch, neutral, make sure that your buttons are pulled out and turn on the key. The first thing you want to look for on your dashboard is your ABS light. Would normally come on and would go off within 90 seconds. At that time, you can go ahead and start up your vehicle. Oh. 
after a, stay, um, a safe start, you want to do your gauges and instruments. The best way to do your gauges and instruments is do it like you're reading a book. Start from the left, work your way over to the right. Come up here and I look at my oil pressure. Your normal range for your oil pressure while driving is between 30 to 60 PSI. Your normal for idle is at 20 PSI. Your water temperature, the normal operating is between 180 and 190. You come over here. You got a digitally displayed voltmeter. Your volt should be between 12 to 15 amps. If by chance your voltmeter is not displayed, you want to push this black button over here until your voltmeter is displayed on your LED screen right there. 14.1. It's in the range of 12 to 15 amps. At that time, you want to move over here to your air pressure. You got a primary and secondary gauge. Your normal range is between 120 to 140 PSI. You always want to mention that between 120 and 140, that's when your governor cutoff comes on. What that means is, is when your air compressor is done building air and there's no more room in your tanks, that governor cutoff will come on and spit out that extra air. So always mention that on your end cabs about your governor cutoff will come on between 120 and 140. The first thing over here is your highway horn. Your city horn. You want to go to your headlights. You want to check your high beam by pushing down on your lever. You got a blue illuminated light on your dashboard. That is your high beam. At that time, you want to check your left turn signal, right turn signal, your wipers, and you also want to splash fluid on your windshield by pushing in on your lever. Okay, continuing on with our gauges and instruments. The next thing is my four-way flashers. You want to turn them on, make sure they illuminate on your dashboard, and then you can turn them off. Continue on, starting left to right, you move over to your heater and defroster. So, you want to turn on, you want to move this dial to heat, there's a, a selector switch right here, indicated by the white knob. You got a defroster. You got a defroster and a heater right here. So, you want to check your defroster. You want to put place your hand up here, make sure that your defroster works. And you also want to place your hand down here to make sure that your heater works. Okay, at this time we're going to uh, check our tractor and trailer brake. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a tug test. Uh, we need to put the vehicle in uh, low gear or third gear. Uh, you always want to go uh, put your clutch all the way to the floor. Uh, your clutch is also a clutch brake. Uh, you want to put your foot all the way to the floor to uh, break your transmission from spinning. Therefore, you're able to put the vehicle in gear without grinding gears. Okay. Now, the first uh, brake that we're going to check, we're going to check our trailer e emergency brake. So we're going to push in our tractor brake and now we're just going to tug it to make sure that our trailer emergency brakes work properly. So you just want to tug it just a little bit and until you feel a little tug right there and then you just want to clutch brake. Now we're going to check our tractor brake. We're going to push our tractor brake out. We're going to push in our trailer emergency brake. Now we are going to check our tractor brake. Again, you just want to ease off the clutch till you feel a little tug. Make sure your tractor brakes are properly working. Let off the clutch a little bit, feel a little tug, and then push your clutch back in.
Okay, after doing your tuck test, you want to check your service brake. So, you're still in gear. You want to make sure that both buttons are pushed in. Now we're going to go forward five miles an hour and we're going to check our service brake, our foot pedal, to make sure that it works. So you want to <clears throat> ease off the clutch and you want to go approximately five miles an hour. And you want to have your hands off the steering wheel and you want to clutch and brake. So you, you actually check two things. Your service brake works and your steering wheel did not go left or right to indicate that you might have a bad brake alignment. Okay, so after you get done with your service brake check, again, as before, you want to make sure that your governor cutoff comes on between 120 and 140. So remember, you're still in gear. Both buttons are pushed in. You want to make sure you're on flat ground. So I'm waiting for my governor cutoff to come on. <clears throat> now if you sit here with your windows rolled down, you can hear it. You can hear it come on. Right there, it came on. At this time, you want to leave your truck in gear with both buttons pushed in. You want you want to turn off your truck. At that time, you want to just turn your truck back on to illuminate your dashboard. Okay, so, so remember, after your service brake check, you want to leave your vehicle in gear, both buttons are pushed in, and your key is on the on position to illuminate your dashboard. Now, you're set up to do your lab test, leaks, alarms, and buttons. Okay, your first test is the leak test. This is when you depress your service brake with your foot and you hold it there for 60 seconds and you want to make sure that you don't lose no more than 4 PSI within that 60 seconds. Now, you have to remember that you're responsible for keeping track of that minute, not the tester. Okay, you have to make sure that you keep time of that minute. So there's two ways that you can keep time of that minute. A watch, or you can count slowly to 60. So we're going to put our foot on the brake pedal for one minute. We're going to keep an eye on our air pressure gauge, make sure that we don't lose no more than four PSI. After that one minute is up, you can release your foot off your service brake. That, that is your lab test your leak test. Your next test is your alarm test. You're checking your alarms. Your alarm should come on between 60 to 65 PSI. What you want to do is you want to fan your brake pedal. You want to push down and push up until your alarm comes on between 60 to 65. You want to keep an eye on your alarm and your air pressure. My air gauge went down between 60 to 65, and there is my alarm. It's a visual alarm, and it's an audible alarm. Okay, your next test is your button test. Now, notice I just touched them. On test day, do not touch your buttons, all right? So, you're going to continue to fan your brakes or pump them until your buttons pop out and your gauge should read between 20 to 45 PSI. You want to watch them buttons for both of them to pop out. I just watched my trailer emergency brake and my parking brake popped out. Okay, uh, your external light check. <clears throat> you want to uh, um, tell that instructor on what lights you want him to check for you. So the first thing you want him to check is your clearance lights on your cab. Okay, next thing is your high beam, low beam, or just headlights. 
This is a marker, reflector, directional, which is a turn signal, or your four ways or emergency lights. Okay. Then back here on your side of your cab, you got a marker, reflector, turn signal, and a four-way flasher. Then on top of your trailer, you have clearance lights on both sides. Okay, continuing on to the back of your tractor, these two uh, lights up here are just uh, reflectors. The middle white one is your reverse light. These two down here are your tail lights or markers. They're also reflectors, turn signals, and four ways. And down here you have a tag light. Going to the side of your trailer, you always want to check up top, make sure you don't have any clearance lights up here. Then on the side of your trailer, this is a marker, reflector, turn signal, and a four-way flasher. Okay, continuing on to the rear of your trailer, you have an ABS light, and you also have a marker and a re reflector light. Coming to the rear of your vehicle, the outside light is a marker, reflector, directional, or a turn signal, and a four-way flasher. Your inside light is also a marker, reflector, and a brake light. You also have a tag light for your license plate. You also want to check ahead for your three red clearance lights. Again, my name is Mark Hoke from JTEC. I hope you enjoyed my video on the Class A vehicle in-cab inspection. Thank you. Can you hear that? Can you feel that? That's doing what you love and turning it into a career. If you love cars and trucks and working with your hands, then you need to know about JTEC, a new automotive, diesel, and commercial truck driving school you'll want to check out. JTEC is driving the next generation of under the hood and over the road technicians by building a top flight automotive and transportation facility on the south side of Jacksonville. There's a big employment gap really in our field right now. There's constantly shops that I go in and call on. You know, they're asking me, hey, do you know where any good techs are? Because they're just not finding them out there. When you're done with the program, you're going to have a lot of opportunities opening up to you. These training skills that are in the side of this building are directly connected to jobs and employment. It could start right here with your training. We're going to make you ready to go right out and start in a field that you're going to have everything you need to earn a living. Step on it. Call JTEC at 855-438-8069 or go to JTEC.org. JTEC, driving futures forward.